can't get my kids to sit at circle time. Oh, if I had a nickel for every time a teacher told me that, I tell you what, I would be rich. But here's the thing. Today I'm going to tell you why that's happening. And I think that you will be able to implement what I teach you today right away in your classroom or even at your home. Here's the deal. Kids need to move. That behavior that they're exhibiting, it's their communication telling you they need to move. Here's the thing. The brain functions at its best when we're moving. That's one reason why we feel so great after exercising. But today in our classrooms, we have seen a increase in seat time and a decrease in free time. The result, children who are stressed out, anxious, don't want to come to school. They're not excited to learn. We've also seen an increase in diagnosis of ADHD. Now, Gretchen Lee Fever Watson, a clinical psychologist at Eastern Virginia Medical School, found that ADHD is overdiagnosed. Experts estimate that 5% is a realistic upper limit of children with a disorder. But in many areas of the country, up to 33% of white boys are diagnosed with ADHD. I wager to guess that the demand on children to sit and be quiet has a lot to do with it. Today, I want to share with you three reasons why kids need to move to learn. Number one, movement is a primal need. You know, it wasn't too long ago that our ancestors were nomadic. That meant they moved often, like up to 14 miles a day in search of food and shelter. But here we are, not that many years later, and we are living a very sedentary life with a goal of 10,000 steps a day. John Medina, who is the author of Brain Rules, says, if you wanted to create an education environment that was directly opposed to what the brain was good at doing, you would probably design something like a classroom. Number two, movement feeds the brain. So what happens when we sit is blood pools in our feet and our seat, and it goes away from our brain. Well, for our brain to properly function, it needs to have oxygen-rich blood. Guess how we create oxygen-rich blood? We move our bodies. Now, when children have opportunities to move their bodies around, that allows their brain to be ready to focus and to concentrate and to learn. Number three, movement locks in learning. This is so important to understand that when children are learning new concepts, if they are also moving their bodies at the same time, you're bringing the information in through lots of different ways, through lots of different doorways. And then when it comes time to retrieve that information, it's been stored in a lot of different areas. During the month of October, I will be talking about the importance of incorporating opportunities to move in your classroom. I can't wait to share research, activities, and classroom management tips that will make movement a simple solution for any behavior problems, as well as integrating more learning that lasts into your classroom. So to kick off our month, I am doing a 50% off sale on my Move, Move, Move album. Now this album has 23 songs that you can do with your kids that get them up and moving. But it's not just a dance party. I love dance parties, but let me tell you, when we have purposeful movement and our activities actually tie to learning outcomes, we as teachers are bringing fun and learning together. Click the link below to visit my store and there you can choose whether you want to download the album and have a digital album, or you can go and click CD and I'll get that CD off in the mail to you today. <laughs>